In order to stay competitive in today's job market, mechanical engineers need to be knowledgeable in a plethora of areas some way more than others, depending on what it is you're designing. For example, designing a car demands expertise in noise, vibration, and harshness, kinematics, thermodynamics, heat transfer, and fluid dynamics. On the other hand, designing a pacemaker requires more knowledge in biomechanics, material science, precision manufacturing, and human factors. But there's one thing that all mechanical engineers must know, no matter what it is they're designing, and that's machine elements. Unfortunately, I've noticed that many mechanical engineers are lacking in this area because schools fail to teach it and because of it, companies are reluctant to hire them. Without a strong grasp of machine elements, designing reliable, innovative, and efficient mechanical systems becomes nearly impossible. So today we'll talk about all the machine elements that you should know to be an impactful mechanical engineer that companies want to hire. There's also a game-changing tool, Jiga.io that has totally changed the way I design and make parts that I'm excited to share with you. So let's get started. Now there are hundreds of off the shelf and customized machine elements or mechanical hardware out there, but I like to organize them into six main categories based on their function. The first category is fastening and joining elements. You probably are familiar with a lot of these already. Bolts and screws, nuts and washers, rivets, welding joints, and adhesive bonds are all examples. These elements are used to temporarily or permanently connect or assemble one component to another component. These connected components can be static, like your smartphone display and chassis, or the 8020 aluminum extrusions used on a test stand. They could also be dynamic, like the connecting rod and piston in your car engine, or wheel assembly and main landing gear in an aircraft. Another way to think about the function of these fastening elements is that they constrain the motion motion of parts. Any part that you design, assuming it's a rigid body, is free to move in space and has six degrees of freedom. Translation and rotation about the X, Y, and Z axes. The most common type of fastener is a screw or a bolt that is paired with a nut and washer. A screw is usually fully threaded and designed to be used in a preformed or threaded hole. A bolt, on the other hand, is tightened by torquing the nut and typically not fully threaded. There are so many different types of screws and bolts that come in a variety of materials, sizes, head types, and drive styles. Depending on where you are, screw and bolt sizes follow either the English or metric system. For English fasteners, the major diameter and threads per inch are used, while the major diameter and pitch are used for metric fasteners. So for example, if you needed an English fastener, you would say quarter 20, and for the metric equivalent, you would say M6 by one. You can learn all about screws, bolts, and other machine elements on one of my favorite websites, McMaster Car. They have an extensive catalog. Now the clamping force of a screw or bolt can be estimated with the following formula. Clamping force equals the torque applied over the friction coefficient times the bolt or screw diameter. Screws and bolts are used literally everywhere from anything as small as an AirPods case to anything as large as a rocket. For lightweight designs like an aircraft wing and fuselage or applications where where there are a lot of hard to reach places or you only have access to a single side, screws and rivets are used instead of bolts. Now another joining element I want to mention here is a key, which is used to lock components like gears or pulleys onto shafts. They are placed into a key seat on the shaft to ensure that torque is effectively transferred without any slipping. Usually they're square or rectangular in geometry but can be other shapes and are sized based on torque and load requirements. You can find keys and a lot of things with rotating components like wind turbines, engines, and conveyors. The primary formula you need to know for designing keys is the shear stress on the key equals the torque transmitted divided by the key width times the key length times the shaft radius. The second category are mechanism elements that transmit motion, create mechanical advantage, and control movement. Gears, K 
cams, cranks, linkages, pulleys, and belts all fit into this category. Gears are critical for transferring power and changing torque or speed. You'll find them in bicycles, car transmissions, watches, and escalators. There are many various types like spur, helical, bevel, worm gears, and so on, each with their specific applications. Spur gears are great for simplicity and low cost designs like in clocks. Helical gears are quieter and handle higher loads, making them perfect for car transmissions. Bevel gears are used in shafts that are perpendicular to each other like in milling machines and helicopter rotor gearboxes. Worm gears are ideal for high torque reduction such as in elevators and conveyor systems. A rack and pinion gear is used to convert rotational to linear motion and vice versa. For example, in your car's steering system, when you turn the steering wheel, that rotates the pinion, which in turn causes the rack to move back and forth and causes the wheels to turn. The gear ratio can be calculated several ways. Divide the number of teeth of the output gear by the number of teeth of the input gear, or the diameter of the output gear by the diameter of the input gear, or the angular velocity of the input gear by the angular velocity of the output gear, or the torque of the output gear by the torque of the input gear. When designing systems with gears, you need to account for backlash, which is the clearance between the teeth of two meshing gears. Too little backlash can cause gears to bind, and too much can cause imprecise motion and cause problems in systems like robotics. Now, before we continue, I just want to emphasize here that no matter what it is you're designing, sourcing custom parts, whether for personal or work-related projects, presents all kinds of challenges. Engineering projects often face very tight deadlines, and finding the right supplier or manufacturer who can make quality, affordable parts fast and provide timely feedback is nearly impossible. That's why I highly recommend you to try out Jiga.io, who is very kindly sponsoring this part of the video. Jiga is a unique custom parts manufacturing platform that connects you with a vast network of vetted suppliers, allowing you to directly communicate your requirements to them. This means you get parts faster, cheaper, and made exactly the way you want. With Jiga, you get to build relationship with suppliers, which not only makes the process more reliable, but also simplifies even the most intricate projects. Whether you need prototype or production parts, Jiga can do it all with its CNC machining, sheet metal, 3D printing, and plastic injection molding capabilities. Their platform is insanely user-friendly. All you need to do is upload your parts and Jiga will provide a quote within hours from multiple suppliers, allowing you to compare prices and lead times to get the best deal possible. What's even better is Jiga's service is fully transparent. You can directly communicate with the supplier for DFM feedback on Jiga's website and add notes to the 3D models to let them know your requirements. Recently, I needed a last minute custom part made for a personal project. I simply uploaded my CAD files to Jiga and literally within minutes, I got quotes from three different suppliers and received the parts in under a week. Jiga is also trusted by top tier companies companies like Google, NASA, and Flex, so you can be sure the quality and on-time delivery of your parts are guaranteed. So if you're looking to simplify and streamline your manufacturing and get parts much faster, definitely check out Jiga.io through the link in the description below. Now just as important as gears, belts and pulleys are used for transmitting power across distances. The three most common types of belts are flat belts for low power applications like conveyor systems. V-belts for high power systems like HVAC systems and industrial equipment, and timing belts for precise motion control in engines and robotics where synchronization is critical. Pulleys leverage a wheel used in conjunction with belts as well as rope and cables to change the direction of force, transmit power, and reduce effort. They come in various configurations such as fixed, movable, and compound, and are used on flat pools and window blinds, cars, construction cranes, gym equipment, and elevators. Similar to gears, the relationship between pulley diameters define the speed ratio, which is equal to the diameter of the output pulley over the diameter of the input pulley, or the angular velocity of the input pulley over the angular velocity of the output pulley. The mechanical advantage offered by pulley systems is simply equal to the number of supporting ropes. So for a system with three supporting ropes, the input force required to lift a load is reduced by a third of the load's weight. Moving on the third category of machine elements, which are sealing and friction reduction components, prevent fluid leakage and minimize wear. Now, they may seem less 
significant compared to the first two categories of machine elements, but believe me, they're just as important. Just look at the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster in 1986. The entire spacecraft disintegrated and seven lives were lost due to failure of the primary and secondary O-rings in the right solid rocket booster. So O-rings, gaskets, bearings, sealants, and lubricants like synthetic oil all fall under this category. O-rings are circular elastomer rings that are designed to sit in a groove and create a seal when compressed. They seal static components like pipe connections or dynamic components like rotating shafts and pumps and gearboxes. A more general type of seal is a gasket which is flat and comes in various shapes that sandwich between two flat surfaces usually with a bolted joint. When designing systems containing gaskets and O-rings be sure to consider material material selection, groove and interface design, squeeze ratio, which is the amount the seal is compressed, and operating conditions like pressures, temperatures, and loads. Now one very important friction reducing element is bearings that support motion between rotating or sliding parts. They're what keep your car wheel spinning smoothly or allow robot arm to rotate with precision. The two primary types are rolling contact bearings like ball bearings and roller bearings and plain bearings bearings like bushings which rely on a lubricating layer. Understanding how to select the right bearing depends on the load type which could be radial, axial, or a combination as well as the speed. For example, use ball bearings for high speeds and roller bearings for heavier loads. The life of a bearing can be estimated using the following formula. The bearing life in revolutions equals the dynamic load rating of the bearing divided by the applied load all to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 6. Next, the fourth category is structural elements. Beams, frames, shafts, and columns are all examples and provide strength, rigidity, and support in mechanical systems. Take a car for example. The chassis or vehicle frame supports all other systems including the engine, transmission, and suspension. Believe it or not, something as small as a smartphone contains structural elements as well. Support structures like screw bosses and brackets hold circuit boards, batteries, and cameras in place, and the the chassis and back panel give the phone its structural integrity. Moving on, the fifth category is energy storage and transfer elements. Springs, flywheels, clutches, and couplings all fit into this category and store, release, and or transfer energy as needed. Springs are probably the most common and versatile out of all of these. You can find them in retractable pins, wind-up cars, garage doors, and your car suspension system. They store and release energy, absorb shock, and control motion. Hook slot is used to calculate the spring force, which equals the spring constant times the displacement. The energy stored in the spring is simply one half times the spring constant times the displacement squared. Couplings are also great to know and connect two rotating shafts to transmit power while accommodating slight misalignments. You can use a coupling to connect the shaft of an electric motor to drive a gearbox that's connected to a linear actuator. The sixth and last category is control and automation components. This is a very broad category and contains elements like buttons, sensors, switches, and motors which enable precise operation, monitoring, and automation of mechanical systems. Sensors are devices that detect and respond to physical stimuli from the environment and convert those to electrical signals that can be processed by control systems. There are literally thousands of different types of sensors. Some important ones include temperature, proximity, pressure, position, light, and force sensors. Almost anything you can think of contains sensors. Automatic doors, faucets, ovens, smartphones, cars, and even traffic lights. Motors are another essential element that convert electrical energy to mechanical motion. They are used in hand drills, washers and dryers, vacuum cleaners, elevators, cars, robotic arms, you name it. The key types of motors are DC, AC, stepper, servo, and linear. Now, of course, we've only just scratched the surface when it comes to machine elements. But if you can get comfortable with the key elements and hardware we discussed today, you'll take your design skills to the next level and boost your competitiveness and qualifications as a mechanical engineer. If you haven't gotten the machinery's handbook yet, be sure to pick up a copy because it contains everything you need to know as a mechanical engineer and provides a detailed overview of machine elements. I'll drop a link in the description below for any of you who are interested.
interested, I highly recommend it. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I share essential design and manufacturing tips that every mechanical engineer needs to know. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.